Aqua Teen Hunger Force Colon Movie Film for Theaters is a 2007 American animated surreal black comedy film based on the Adult Swim animated series Aqua Teen Hunger Force. The film was written and directed by the show's creators, Matt Maialaro and Dave Willis. The film features the voices of Dana Snyder, Kerry Means, Willis, Maialaro, Mike Schatz, Andy Merrill, C. Martin Croker, Bruce Campbell, Neil Peart and Chris Catton. The film was theatrically released on April 13, 2007. The film marks the first time an Adult Swim series was adapted into a feature film. The film grossed $5.5 million on a $750,000 budget. Warner Home Video released the film in a two-disc DVD edition on August 14, 2007. Topic. Plot Before the main feature, a faux theater concession stand advertisement plays. A group of anthropomorphic theater snacks, the Soda Dog Refreshment Band, sings a spoof of Let's All Go to the Lobby until they are interrupted by another snack band performed by Mastodon. They proceed to loudly sing their own bizarre theater rules before finishing on a guitar solo. The film properly begins in Egypt, where Master Sheikh, Frylock, and Meepwood break free from the Sphinx, and are attacked by an oversized poodle who kills Frylock before Sheikh defeats it. Sheikh and Meepwood flee with Frylock's corpse and meet Time Lincoln. He helps revive Frylock, however, when government agents break into his house, Time Lincoln helps the Aqua Teens escape in a wooden rocket ship. Time Lincoln is shot, changing the timeline and resulting in the Confederate States of America's victory in the American Civil War and the government agents being made slaves to a black Kentucky colonel as punishment for their crimes against the South. All this, however, is an elaborate story concocted by Sheikh to explain their origin to Meatwood. A triangular slice of watermelon named Walter Mellon is flying about in a spaceship made from a hollowed-out watermelon. He begins observing events of the Aqua Teens on Earth, including a backyard concert performed by Meatwood. All unfolding according to his plan. Walter Mellon is joined in the ship by Neil Peart from Rush, sitting at his drums. Shake plans to work out on his new exercise machine, the Insaniflex. Frylock notices that the machine isn't assembled properly and the instructions are nowhere to be found. He searches online for them and instead finds a website written in a rare dialect, with a message in English warning not to assemble the machine ever. The site however lists a phone number which Frylock calls. It is revealed to be the number of Emery and Oglethorpe, the Plutonians. Before they even bother to answer the phone, they discover the cybernetic ghost of Christmas past from the future on board with them. The cybernetic ghost explains to the two aliens the story of the Insaniflex. A machine, when assembled, will exercise a man into a super being, who will attract all the women on Earth leading to massive inbreeding and the eventual extinction of mankind. To prevent this, the ghost traveled to the past and stole a single screw that holds the machine together. The Plutonians point out to him that to get it assembled, someone could just buy another screw or shove a pencil in the screw hole. Back on Earth, Frylock finishes rebuilding the Insaniflex, with a pencil in the screw hole, somehow having obtained instructions. He discovers a missing M-shaped circuit board on the back panel. The trio visit Carl, from whom Shake had stolen the machine, to see if he has the missing piece. After he refuses to tell them, Meatwood finds the address in the Insaniflex's box. Dr. Weird, whose abandoned asylum has been purchased and is being turned into condominiums around them, is visited by Shake, Frylock, and Meatwood. Frylock retrieves the missing circuit board and installs it into the machine upon returning home. Carl insists that as the rightful owner he should be the first to test out the machine. The Insaniflex straps him in and transforms itself into a giant one-eyed robot. The robot plays dance, techno music and heads for downtown Philadelphia, all while Carl strapped in form is forced to exercise. Eventually, the robot begins laying metallic spherical eggs, which hatch into smaller versions of the machine. The Aqua Teens, aided by an instructional workout video, find a way to destroy the machine by using music. With little time and a failed encounter with MCP Pants reincarnated as a fly, the Aqua Teens have no choice but to have Shake play his music. Shake poorly plays his original song, Nude Love, on acoustic guitar, forcing the Insaniflex to commit suicide. Carl, now bulging with so much muscle that he can barely move, leaves with his newly found date, a female bodybuilder named Linda, and they head back to her condo while the Aqua Teens try to figure out a way to stop the newly hatched Insaniflexes from destroying the city. 
As they travel to a possible lead back at Dr. Weird's asylum, Frylock begins to tell the origin story of the Aqua Teens. They were created by Dr. Weird, along with a chicken nugget who had gone by the name of Chicken Biddle. In the flashback, Dr. Weird proclaims that the Aqua Teens were created for one purpose, to crash a jet into a brick wall. Realizing the pointlessness of this mission, Frylock diverted the jet and set a course to Africa, where they would try to use their intelligence to solve world hunger. Upon entering Africa, Bittle was attacked and eaten by a lion. The remaining Aqua Teens then tried to help a small village but instead scared them away. After realizing they couldn't be much help, they returned to America and rented out what is now their house in New Jersey. Shake and Meat would state that they do not remember any of this, but Frylock explains it was because they were too busy playing Game Boy to pay any attention. Meanwhile, Carl and Linda recline in her room, where she reveals herself to be Dr. Weird in disguise. He cuts off Carl's muscles and grafts them onto his own body. Frylock and Dr. Weird do battle while they argue back and forth about who created whom. Dr. Weird claims that it was Frylock who created him, not the other way around. Dr. Weird shows Frylock a teddy bear filled with razor blades. Shake tries to take the teddy bear, but he loses his hand. Dr. Weird then reveals that the blue diamond on Frylock's back hides a VCR, in which a videotape with false memories of Dr. Weird creating Frylock had been playing in Frylock's head. Frylock also admits that he is transsexual lesbian trapped in a man's body. Just then, Walter Mellon arrives in his ship. Meatwood mentions he saw the ship earlier. Shake calls him a liar and shoots him with a shotgun. Shake gets concerned when Meatwood doesn't reform like always. Walter tells Neil to play the drum solo of life to bring Meatwood back to life. Meanwhile, Shake tries to pick up the teddy bear for the second time, but loses his other hand. Shake forgets about his hands and leaves it. Walter Mellon explains he created the Aqua Teens and all the other characters, including the Insaniflex. His plan was so that they would all eventually kill each other and Walter would inherit all their real estate in order to create the Insano Gym. Everyone, however, informs Walter that they all rent and do not own any property, proving Walter's plan and everyone's existence had been useless and pointless. Walter storms off in his ship, threatening to tell their mother. Just then, the teens see their alleged mother standing before them, revealed to be a nine-layer bean burrito. Shake unknowingly jumps out the window, Meatwood hugs her and Frylock states, That's neat. In an abrupt end, the Soda Dog Refreshment Gang come on screen once again and sing the audience out. In a post-credits scene, the cybernetic ghost of Christmas past from the future is seen humping the TV in the Aqua Teens' living room. Then a female box of fries, presumably Frylock who got a sex change, comes in and says, Time for bed, honey. Topic. Cast Dana Snyder as Master Shake Carrie Means as Frylock Dave Willis as Meatwood, Karl Brutunanadilevsky, Ignignyakt, Video Game Voice Matt Maialaro as Ur, Cybernetic Ghost, Satan Andy Merrill as Oglethorpe Mike Schatz as Emery C. Martin Croker as Dr. Weird, Steve Bruce Campbell as Chicken Biddle Neil Peart as Neil Peart of Rush Chris Catton as Walter Mellon MC Chris as MCP Pants Fred Armisen as Time Lincoln George Lowe as Space Ghost Isaac Hayes III as Plantation Owner Tina Fey as Burrito H. John Benjamin as CIA Agent 1 John Glazer as CIA Agent 2 Craig Harden as Rob Goldstein Matt Harrigan as Linda Mastodon uncredited as Interrupting Snack Band Topic. Production Topic. Development In an interview at the 2005 San Diego ComicsCon, Dana Snyder and Matt Maialaro confirmed rumors that there would be a feature-length movie of Aqua Teen Hunger Force. More details were revealed at the 2005 Paley Television Festival, such as a possible cameo by 80s funk group Cameo, and Maialaro described it as, "...an action piece that leads into an origin story that unfolds in a very Aqua Teen way." The creators revealed much more information in an interview with Wizard Entertainment. 
While they dodged many questions, they confirmed that the film would run 80 minutes, produced on a meager $750,000 budget, and features a plot detail about a lost Aqua Teen, who is a large chicken nugget named Chicken Bittle, voiced by Bruce Campbell. They also confirmed more cameos, with Rush drummer and lyricist Neil Peart, voice actor H. John Benjamin and his comedy partner John Glazer, and Saturday Night Live's Fred Armisen to make appearances. Heavy metal band Mastodon stated in a Decibel article that they would be performing during the opening, and that the band would be animated as a bucket of popcorn, a soda, a hot dog, and a candy bar. They were actually animated as a pretzel, a pile of nachos, an ice caps box, and a gumdrop. Topic. Rating Regarding the film's rating, Mayalaro commented that, I think if the movie is rated R, it won't get the audience that watches it. But we don't know yet. We're still waiting to find out. Following this, the release trailer advertised the film as rated R. The film is mostly uncensored. When censoring does occur, it is occasionally accompanied by a censoring beep that does not obscure the word. Censoring also occurs once during a flashback. As explained in the production feature, the inconsistency was an editing mistake, but left untouched for comic effect. Topic. Soundtrack The soundtrack was released on April 10, 2007, under the title Aqua Teen Hunger Force Colon Movie Film for Theaters Colon The Soundtrack. It features many previously unreleased songs, some recorded for the purpose of this album. In addition, the compilation features an intro, outro titled, Nude Love, by Aqua Teen character Master Shake, a track from former Spin.com artist of the day MC Chris, skits and sound bites from the movie, and a new version of the Aqua Teen Hunger Force theme by rapper Schooly D. The album features mix of musical styles ranging from heavy metal, indie rock, and hip-hop, and also features new, original music from Mastodon, Killer Mike and Unearth. Noticeably missing is, In the Air Tonight, by Phil Collins, which is prominently featured at the end of the film. Master Shake, Nude Love, 127 Soda Dog Refreshment Squad, Groovy Time for a Movie Time, 048 Mastodon Cut You Up With a Linoleum Knife", 150 Early Man, More To Me Than Meat and Eyes, 311 Schooly D, Aqua Teen Hunger Force Theme, Remix, 134 Meatwood, Skit 018 Unearth, The Chosen, 350 Andrew W.K., Party Party Party, 156 Karl Brutan and Adilevsky, Skit 015 Nine Pound Hammer, Karl's Theme, 242 Brass Castle, Bookworm Resin, 334 Master Shake, Skit 022 Killer Mike, Blam Blam, 612 Insane O'Flex, I Like Your Booty But I'm Not Gay, 204 MC Chris, I Want Candy, 203 the Hold Steady, Girls Like Status, 243. Master Shake, Nude Love, Reprise, 928. Features hidden tracks, Meatwood and Superchunk, Misfits and Mistakes. Master Shake and Nashville Pussy, Face Omelette. Karl Brutan and Adilevsky, Skit. Matt Maialaro, guitar solo note, Kerry Means Frylock, is absent from the skits, sound bites, and hidden tracks where the other Aqua Teens can be heard. Regardless, Kerry Means still portrays Frylock in the film. Topic: <laughs> Marketing. The film's poster was illustrated by Julie Bell and Boris Vallejo, and parodies the King of the Mountain design. Topic. Boston Moonite Panic On January 31, 2007, police in Boston, Massachusetts received reports of devices resembling bombs in various places around the city. 
The devices turned out to be electronic signs similar to a light bright that displayed images of the Muninites Igninyuk and Ur giving the finger, and were designed to promote the Aqua Teen Hunger Force television show as part of a guerrilla marketing campaign authorized by Cartoon Network, the cartoon's parent company. The boards were present in several cities for weeks before the ones in Boston were reported. The Boston city government sought a reimbursement for the money spent responding to the incident. The amount quoted was $500,000 initially, and then was increased to $750,000. On February 5, it was announced that Turner Broadcasting and the City of Boston have reached an agreement to pay $2 million to offset the cost of removing the devices, $1 million to cover the cost of the agencies involved, and an additional $1 million in goodwill funding to Homeland Security. An episode from Season 5, entitled, Boston was produced as the series creator's response to the scare, but Adult Swim pulled it to avoid further controversy surrounding the events of the bomb scare. <laughs> <laughs> April Fool's Day Television Premiere. Adult Swim began running advertisements on March 25, 2007, advertising the television premiere of the movie the following Sunday April 1, 2007. Its only reasoning behind this stunt, as stated in the advertisement, was, "...because we're fucking crazy." While Adult Swim's TV listings on its website stated the movie would be shown, other TV listings reported the same Sunday block. The stunt was, in actuality, yet another one of Adult Swim's annual April Fool's pranks, though the first few minutes of the movie were shown normally, the remainder was shown in a small picture-in-picture -picture box in the bottom left-hand corner, with no sound over the normal programming and occasional giant pop-ups alerting viewers of its presence, as well as advertising the actual premiere. The advertising was shown again on one episode of the Family Guy Marathon on July 6, 2007. The movie eventually was shown on Sunday, March 30, 2008. The day after the April Fool's joke, Cartoon Network showed another bumper, stating, Sorry you will still have to pay to actually see the movie. But thanks for the ratings. <laughs> Fake endings In yet another promotional stunt, the ending to the movie was posted in various places including YouTube, KingColin.com in the worst game ever game, and fansite, Aqua Teen Central. Each ending was completely different. Eventually, the Adult Swim website let it be known that none of the endings were real and presented seven more clips which were fake as well throughout the weeks following the film's release. These endings, now called the fake.com endings, are available on the film's extras. DVD on the two-disc collector's edition. These endings are parodies of other films. For example, one of the endings spoofs The Terminator, featuring Meatwood as The Determinator. Topic. Release Topic. Home media Warner Home Video released Aqua Teen Hunger Force Colon Movie Film for theaters in a two-disc DVD edition on August 14, 2007. For the DVD release, the studio changed the title of the 87-minute full-length movie to Aqua Teen Hunger Force Colon Movie Film for theaters for DVD, just like the film soundtrack's title. The DVD features include the ten fake endings as shown on the internet, a making of featurette, promos, the deleted scenes episode, a music video, and an 80-minute animatic rough cut of the movie made out of the deleted scenes from the film and scenes from the deleted scenes episode as well as a commentary. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame inductee Patti Smith is featured on the DVD commentary. The scene after the credits was removed from the UK DVD release. The set also features the season 4 episode, Deleted Scenes, also known as Star-Studded Xmas Spectacular which makes heavy references and parallels to the film that originally aired years prior to the film's release on December 18, 2005. The film is also available in HD and SD on the Xbox Live Marketplace. Reception Box office 
The film was a box office success, making $5,520,368 domestically against its $750,000 budget. Topic critical response With 28 reviews compiled, Metacritic reported that movie film for theaters has received an average rating of 54 one-hundredths, which it labeled mixed reviews. Rotten Tomatoes gave the film an approval rating of 48% based on reviews from 85 critics, with an average rating of 5.1.10. The website's consensus states, the non-sequitur humor of Aqua Teen Hunger Force will surely appeal to its built-in fanbase, but for the uninitiated, the premise wears thin. Reviews ranged from Glenn Kenny at Premiere Magazine, who stated that he was tempted to refer to the film as the most successful full-on surrealist film since Barnwell and Dali's 1930 Lage d'Or, to Ty Burr of the Boston Globe, who called it an act of terrorism against entertainment. The film was given a thumbs down on the television show at the movies with Ebert and Roper. Richard Roper criticized the film's runtime and calling it unfunny, though he said the first five minutes of the film were funny. In response to such reviews, a commercial featuring the Moonites began airing during the Adult Swim block. The two characters spend the entire commercial insulting a supposedly typical reviewer, Lionel of LionelLovesMovies.com. The site merely leads back to the movie page. Other commercials recommend people see the film two or three more times to push the box office numbers up. Adult Swim also mentioned in one of its commercial bumpers that the review situation highlights the generation gap, and that most negative reviews came from much older critics. Planned sequel There has been mention of producing a sequel entitled Death Fighter. While little has been confirmed by Adult Swim in regards to the film, there have been many statements regarding it. On December 15, 2008, Dave Willis stated no script was written and that the movie would be released in spring 2009 though, as he also stated that Death Fighter was a t-shirt he was working on, he likely wasn't being serious following this, in an April 2009 interview, Dave joked about the movie lacking any sort of funding and being sold out of the back of his car. In a 2010 interview, staff members of Radical Axis confirmed that a sequel was indeed in production, and mentioned the possibility that the film might be made in 3D. When asked if the film was designed for a theatrical release, a Radical Axis staff member responded yes, but stated, We're not sure if we have a distributor yet. This was then followed by the statement, Adult Swim will never make another movie ever again. In 2012, Matt Maialaro released more news regarding the film, that being, it is all written and great. We are just trying to convince the network do it again. The first one was such a cash cow for them, not just box office but also ad sales in the movie. So it is kind of a no-brainer. So hopefully one day. By 2014, the script had been completed and approved and would be released somewhere in mid-2015 and jokingly stated that the movie was shelved as it wasn't G-rated. However, on April 25, 2015, at a C2CE convention panel, Willis indirectly stated that the project was scrapped, soon after announcing the show's cancellation. He later mentioned on Reddit that it would cost $3.4 million to produce, and expressed interest in doing a Kickstarter to fund it. He also reportedly stated that the movie could potentially be released in the next two years. <laughs> 